And everybody's got, got uh, any joints out of the joint, ask God to put them back in. Amen. That's right. You don't get them all, you better get them back in. <laughs>
Oh, right. <laughs> right when you see those right so, there. So, <laughs> if you don't like leftovers, he's out of luck. So, you better build your stuff up. Okay, change the name of him. I can tell you how awesome God is and how awesome this is. There's a, there's a, there's a part in the mess. I'm not trying to tell everything about the mess, but the part where you actually, you actually go to the cross and, and while you're confessing your sin that you need God to take care of, uh, you pinch off a piece of bread and and representing the sacrifice of Jesus, and, and you put that in a basket. And we went outside with the basket and threw it in the in the water over it at. Uh, Camp Caroline, we put it in the water, and the seagulls wouldn't touch it, and the fish wouldn't eat it. Hmm. Oh, my hmm. You never see fish and seagulls not. Mm -hmm. they, they flew by, run, run by, but they never touched that bread. Oh, it sank. <laughs> wow. That is, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that is awesome. God's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you do. Holy <laughs> bread. It was holy bread, that's right. That's right. I, I, I was talking to a, an Episcopal minister, and he said they had their they had their uh, holy wine, and and once the saint finally consecrated, if it's not whatever was not used, him and the elder would have to drink it. And once it's consecrated, you couldn't put it back in the bottle, and you couldn't throw it away. And he said his very first <clears throat> communion, the lady that was helping him, <clears throat> she went to get her she went to get communion just for him, and when she did. When she went down to get to the cup, her upper plate fell right into the... Oh, man. <laughs> True story. Yeah, so she yeah, looked right. up with no teeth and just smiled at him. And he looked down and saw those teeth and went, oh, no. <laughs> and he called, he called his district superintendent and told him, said, or bishop, whatever they got. He said, if I'm supposed to drink this wine, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and the man said... Under circumstances, we can we can we can dedicate it to the ground. So dedicate that. To the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was my favorite. Of course, I told you Sunday about when they, when they had communion with prune juice. <laughs> 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 yep, that had to be a very unique experience. <laughs> 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 now that's what I'm talking about. Here we go. Communication. Now uh, we spent all these weeks talking about negative communication. Now we're talking about positive, and that's cool because I couldn't wait to get to the positive because we just left it the negative. Although it was very informative and very helpful, very very helpful. <clears throat> it helps you understand some of the, the roots of negative, and even in our own lives how we use negative. We didn't even realize that we use negative. How many times uh, when you when you start hearing when God enlightens you about something, you find out. You've been doing it wrong the whole time and, 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 and thought everything was cool and didn't realize that you were actually pulling the seats up out of the ground. <laughs> Have you ever done that? And you got to find some, oh man, Lord, I did not understand. I did not know. Okay, so now we're trying to get back in the notice. We'll pull the seats out of the ground. So get your Bibles. Oh, not Bibles. Just use your, just use your uh, outline. It's right there on your outline. It's very clear. It's right there. Uh, Ephesians 4.29. It says, do not let any wholesome, unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Not only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may, be, may benefit those who listen. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, that you're just an awesome God. I thank you, God, that we don't have to wonder if you're with us. We don't have to wonder if you're going to take care of us. We don't have to wonder if you're going to keep your word. Because we know, Lord, every time, even in our greatest doubt, you always come through and we wind up saying, you know what, Lord, we shouldn't have doubted. Father, I ask you right now, I want to touch them on each other. Lord, open our eyes, God, let's see things differently. And we'll thank you for it right now. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 Now, you constantly continue to deliver messages which reveal the true disposition of your heart. Remember, Satan can imitate the gifts, but Satan cannot imitate uh, the love. All right? He cannot imitate the fruit of the Spirit. He can try, but eventually it's going to come out because what's in you is going to come out. Amen? If you go to the grocery store and go over in the produce section and you and, and, and they got a lemon cut up and you squeeze that lemon, you're not going to get orange juice. <laughs> if you cut up an apple and squeeze it, you're not going to get tomato juice. Whatever is in is what comes out. And so it's very important we ask God to help us 
to keep our heart clean so we can communicate. It's very important that we communicate. You know, <clears throat> uh, uh, D.C. gives them all the time. Daddy or, or and Daniel or whoever he's always talking about, enunciate. Make sure you enunciate when you're singing because people need to hear you enunciate. And, and I hear him talking about that, and I think about this thing. You know what? Everybody needs to hear us clearly. And we need to have something clear, something good to hear, and they can hear us clearly. So here we go. A heart that listens. I just put the old paragraph in there, because it's just easy for that, for that to say it than me try to, to try to tell you. Whether they are the complaints of people, I can guarantee you people are going to complain. <laughs> On Sunday morning, if I stood up here and got the ushers, to hand out free $10 bills. Free. Y'all say free. 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 Not free. 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 I'm trying to enunciate. <laughs> <laughs> if I got the ushers to hand out free $10 bills, I guarantee you when I got in the back, somebody or more than one, maybe as much as five, would complain because they, I didn't give away two fives. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or one of them was tore. They, or one of them was tore, or one had the new bill, one had the old bill. You know? <clears throat> and so, so people, their nature is to complain. Hey? I mean, hey, I, there's a little boy he hadn't taught. He was four or five years old. He had never taught. And, and they kept getting worried about it. And thought, well, the doctor said, I don't understand. He just don't talk. He said, one day he will. And one day they were eating, and the soup was awful. And the boy just reached right up out of nowhere and said, this soup is awful. <laughs> and everybody just stopped and said, wow, that's the first time you've said anything in four or five years. I said, why didn't you say something before now? He said, well, up now it's been pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Whether there's the place of people, the arguments of a defensive teenager, or the incessant chatter of a four-year-old, speaking of incessant chatter, I'm over there looking at what Daniel's building Saturday, and I've got Emmy with me. And, and Daniel says, Paul, Paul, look over there. I looked over there, and there was Anna Lane at the window. <clears throat> and she was just a hollering for me. So I went over there, and when I went in, she started telling me something. I'm not sure what she was telling me, but Daniel said she was to make sure you get it. <laughs> and so she was telling me something, telling me all kinds of stuff, and I, I knew whatever it was, it had to be important. So I'm sitting there trying to listen. And I'm getting about every third word, although she's doing good, but still getting about every third word. And then I said, well, I got to go, girl. And when I got ready to go away, she did something she's never done before without being told to. As I walked away, she said, I love you, Paul Paul. Oh. Hey. You gone. I was like an Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm mean, on the outside and the inside. Amen. And Daniel said, you hear that? And all I can think of, she had not said it. That was pretty good. Amen. <laughs> I went back and hugged her, and I kissed her on the forehead, and I swung her around. And gave her the m and That's right. The words of others are either endured or embraced. Hey, have you ever met somebody, the whole time they're talking, you're going, if they'll just be quiet, I can leave. <laughs> have you ever heard that? Don't say you do it every Sunday morning, please. <laughs> Do you ever hear somebody get talking to you and as soon as they start talking, you go. No. Some people, their voice is just that way. They got that high-pitched voice, certain certain pitch of voice. The woman could be or a man could be telling me the most awesome news, but the way they're telling it to me, they're going, you know, uh, uh, or, or, or somebody talks real low to you and, and you used to listen to them low, so your ears are already adjusted to them talking low, and all of a sudden now they go, Hey! <laughs> yeah. So, so either you endure them or you embrace them. And there's certain people in your life they can say anything and you embrace everything they say. And there's certain people in your life you just kind of, okay, let's get this over with. Well, you know what? I challenge you today, and I'm just as guilty. I'm pointing this way too. I challenge you when you hear people that sound like chalkboard, fingernails on a chalkboard. Stop and listen even more. Because sometimes that chalkboard squeaking is God talking to you through me. Wow. See, it's li listen. Oh, I see it. Here you go. Listening is easy to fake. 
Attending this is simple to pretend, but real listening requires effort. Have you ever been talking to somebody looking at you and going, mm hmm, mm hmm, yeah. mm hmm? And, then, and you ask them a question, and they're still going, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. <laughs> they no more heard you. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like they're listening to you. Here's the problem. Watch this. Here it goes. Say yes, more than three times. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Real listening requires effort. Our self-centered tendency is to tune others out and our own thoughts in. That's just one way. Everybody has that. Everybody. Say everybody. <laughs> we tend to muse. Now y'all know what muse means. Muse means more than just think. Muse means to actually get in there and, and, and really contemplate and really start putting it together. That's why, what, what do they call a museum? Muse. Museum. That's where you got to think. You're looking at all this stuff and you just brought back. Man, hey, what was it? You know, I remember going up in the Confederate Museum after I had my, have, have a, we did a bone marrow transplant. Right next door to that hospital was the Confederate Museum. And so I go to the Confederate Museum and I walk in there and I'm just blown away about all the uniforms because the uniforms, all them people, those people are right that tall. <laughs> those little bitty fellas. I couldn't even thought about putting on any of those uniforms. I was looking at that. And you know, honestly, my, my mind was I was musing on that, but I had this great little big bandit on my back where they'd cut me and get all that bone marrow. And the school come in, they were they were actually uh, watching it, and they kept running around and kept hitting me in the back, and so I finally said, I'm gone. I kept musing on the stuff. I started musing on the back and had to get out. But muse. And an amusement park, A, maybe put A in front of something, it means actually it cancels it out. An amusement park means to not think. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amusement park, a museum. So what we do is we've got stuff on our mind. You know, I, I would like, I like to see what God thought when we're all here pray, doing prayer requests, everybody's praying, and he can, and I can, he can do this. He goes out each one and goes, and, and we're all praying for the prayer request. We've got our hands up to the floor, and we're going down. So say, yes, Lord, touch that prayer request. Yes, Lord, you've got to minister them. I wonder if chicken's going to be a good you know, sale this week. <laughs> the Lord asked you to minister to this person. You know the need in their life. Uh, Lord, is the back of my head looking bad now? <laughs> you know, because we muse. We just break out in thought, spontaneous thought about things. So we tend to muse, reminisce, or think about what we're going to say next. One of the hardest things to have a conversation with is a person that's not listening to understand, but they're listening to respond. Because the whole time they're talking to you, they're not listening to understand what you're saying. They're waiting for you to be quiet so they can tell you what they think. Okay, so, so, so here it is. As you begin to understand that, understand that God more often than not communicates to you through the words of others and through your words to other people. Your heart will desire to be an attentive listener. The major step to becoming a genuine listener is learning how to listen to God. So here we go. This is what it's about. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. All right? Then let the, guide, let, let the discerning get the guidance. All it is. Let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance. So here it goes. It's only, it's only a one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, six and, and, and seven. After we, uh, you got more on your paper, I think, than I did. Uh, do you? Six, six, okay. six and a half. Okay, yeah. All right, here we go. Listen to God. This, this, this is how it, I want you to think about this thing now. How many want to really grow? Amen. Amen. How many want this church to really grow? Amen. How many want to see God glorified? That's yes. right. How many want God to speak to you in so many different levels that, that, that it blows your mind away? Amen. You see, I, I remember just this other day. Now, again, this is another day. I, I was, I, I had to go to Keith Mason's office, and so I went to Keith, Ma Keith Ma Mason's office, and he said, how about give me a little while, I've got to go do something, so I said, well, I've got to get my car working on, so I'll just come back. They said, we'll call you when we're ready. Well, my car got finished, or not even finished, actually postponed it, I'm going to do it tomorrow, but they postponed it, and so uh, I get up, and I said, Lord, what do I do now? He didn't have it called me. And I heard that little voice say, they're ready for you. 
said, okay. So I went and found me a parking place. I went in Keith Mason's office. And when the secretary was home, she said, Mr. Lynn, she said, they haven't called for you yet. And I heard his paralegal say, hold it. I was just out to make that phone call to get him. What kind of time? <laughs> that same paralegal, just a couple of months ago, when I first went in his office, I was stopped at the Dollar Tree. And while I'm at the Dollar Tree, how many ever heard of Whorehound uh, cough drops? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, they're good stuff. They're good stuff. Get yes, sir. You can get Warhound candy and Warhound cough drops. I, I didn't have a cough. I didn't. I mean, other than my normal just the allergy cough, but it was not anything to do with coughing. I walked up through, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, "Buy them cough drops." I said, "Lord, I'm not coughing." I heard as clear as a bell. I heard you're going to run into somebody today that needs them. Give them. So I got it. I'm walking out. I'm thinking. Lord, you know what's going on. This is crazy. I'm not coughing, and I got these uh, whorehound cough drops. And, and so I do my stuff all day long, and I stopped at Keith Mason's office. I walked in, and his paralegal said, <coughs> I said, I'm here to see Keith. She said, How are you here to, <coughs> you here to ah, ah, ah. And I said, Are you all right? She said, ah, I can't stop coughing. Ah, I'm ah. I said, You're the one. <laughs> and she went, oh. <laughs> and so I rolled out to the car and brought the cough drops to her. And every time I see her, she goes, I'm so glad you listened to him that day. <laughs> now, do I always listen to God? No. <gasps> no. How many of you do something you feel like you say, but that little voice told me, and you went, I should have listened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. How many say that more than you think, well, that little voice told me, and I'm glad I listened. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, that's right. Shake your heads <laughs> one way or the other. Okay, here we go. Listening to God requires a belief that God loves me and desires to communicate with me. Wow. Listening to God requires a belief that God loves me and desires to communicate with me. I, I like this verse right here in the scripture. It says, The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I love this verse here. Of course, the King James says, That I appeared to you, appeared to you in the old unto me saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. But I love this version right here. Long ago, the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love, with un." Failing love, I have drawn you to myself. Why? God wants to talk to us. Not just the preacher, not just the Sunday school teacher. God wants to talk to everybody. This is child. Amen. Amen. A good parent talks to every child they have. Amen. Amen. So now watch this. Now let me ask you a question now. I'm just going to ask you quickly. Uh, tell me some methods. Tell me some methods you think God may use to talk to us, or maybe talk through history how He's talked to them. Anybody got anything to think how God's talked to them or talked? I know how He talks to me now through you, through this. Oh yes, the Holy Spirit. Awesome. Absolutely, through work. I mean, it'll be a, something a girl, one of the girls will have going on, and every time within five or ten minutes, you will send a text and say, "Wow." And I told the girls, I said, "God just sent you a message." Wow, that's awesome. Absolutely. God's right awesome. Right on the spot. And I said, tell me God don't text message. He does. Hey, God uses text. That's right. <laughs> God does text. Amen. You know, so and his bill and, and his service don't go down. And also does that action to really show you. Yeah. Like when I told y'all the other Sunday morning, I was a little late coming in. Y'all was mm -hmm. just singing and just singing what's going on. And I was just coming in just blank of mind. And when I... Started, I wanted to sing my own song like I was <laughs> washing, you know, it's just got so happy. That's good God. And then that evening, I, I was a little, I, I came in and there was, wasn't really any in here. And, and, and it was like I just <coughs> cloud of love. That's awesome. And then when I went home, those actions. Awesome. That's right. And, and, you know, he does like 
That's awesome. Well, I'm gonna give you some. Let me give you some examples. If you're taking notes, you're on the right, just down, right down in the front, right down the back of it. This is according to the word. First, he talks to us through his word. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given or is inspired by God. Uh, God breathed. It's out of his mouth. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16. The Bible says in Psalms 119, his, his, it's a light to a path, a, 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 a lamp to a pathway, a light to a path. So first, through the word of God. Secondly, through an inner, small voice of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Kings, when Elijah was uh, sitting down, waiting, he said, where are you, God? And he's at this mountain, and all this stuff goes by. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Still small voice. Sometimes it's so awesome when you're when you're shaking, something's got you scared, and you hear that still that still small voice go, I got you. I got this. Uh, through the advice and counsel of men and women of God, Proverbs 12 and 15 says, The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Uh, through the audible voice of God, Acts 9, 45, 9, 4, and 5, the Bible says Saul, he was on the way to make make havoc for the church. And he gets knocked down by that bright light and he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Through dreams, there are many instances in the Bible where God clearly communicates through dreams. And uh, in Matthew 1, 20 and 21, but after he considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Here's Joseph, he's thinking about, about divorcing Mary. And the Bible says that, uh, that the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because while it's conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, she will give birth to a son, and you shall give to him the name Jesus, because he will save the people from their sin. Through visions, Acts 10, 9, 9 and 18, about noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, P Peter went up on the roof to pray, and he became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something, a large sheep, uh, being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have not eaten anything impure or unclean. The boy spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of this vision, the man sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped by the gate. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. What God was trying to get him to do is he went and said, I want you to minister to some Gentiles. Because they consider Gentiles unclean. And so he says, I need you and then to eat eat from that sheep. He, he said, I don't want you to just rob by and give him, give him a drive by, the drive by where you threw a track at him and kept on going. I want you to stop. I want you to commune with them. I want you to tell them. I want you to become part of them. I want you to talk to them about what's going on. Also through angels. The Bible tells us in, this, in Luke chapter 1 of the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, the angel Gabriel to Nazareth into a town in Galilee to a virgin place to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you, are, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this may be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You found, found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give him the throne of his father. That, you, know, uh, you found favor. I, Daniel, I might have told you all this, but Daniel really, really got into my heart. Daniel was over in Afghanistan. And I taught these boys every morning. I said, boys, but they were little. When we would pray, I said, Lord, I thank you for a favor over our lives. Open the doors that need to be open today. Close the doors that need to be closed. I thank you for your favor on our lives. Well, I really didn't know how that stuck to the boys until uh, Daniel was in Afghanistan. And Daniel... Daniel happened to tell me just recently, it's been years, several years since he was in Afghanistan, but he just told me recently that about, a, about it, and he even gave me the date where his SUV was blown upside down. 
and, and with an IED. And, and he got out of there. But he told me, he said, I said, Daniel, I prayed for God every day to give you favor. You know what Daniel said? Daniel said, how do you think I got out of there? He said, Daddy, every day. I said, thank you, God, for divine favor. I thank you, God, for your favor. You're going to open the doors that will be open and close the doors that need to be closed. I thank you for divine favor. He said, Daddy, I knew the favor of God was with me when that happened. Mm. I'm telling you, it, 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 it gets in your spirit. You've got to get it in your spirit when you're trying to talk to God, all right? He talks to us through circumstances. He talks to that's what y'all were talking about, circumstantial stuff, by inner conviction and peace. So here we go. It's listening to God. Number two, listening to God requires constant reading studying and meditating on his living word, the Bible. The Bible says, my word that goes out of my, my mouth and will not return to me empty or void, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which uh, it was sent. Now, now <clears throat> I'm going to say something that may, may sound a little harsh. I'm not trying to let it sound harsh. I'm just trying to say reality. If the only time you study the Bible, if the only time during the week, is you study the Bible is when you're in church and you're studying, you're, you're following along in the Bible with what I'm saying. I promise you, that works. That's good. But your life will be spiritually anemic. Right? Why is it going to be anemic? Because it takes more than coming in here uh, for, for uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes on Sunday morning. Because look at all those days you've got to go without the Word. You can still chew on it. It's still, it's, Sunday morning is helpful. Very helpful. But that's Rima word. Sunday morning you're getting Rima word. Word is applied to your situation. The word is applied to your life. But during the week it's important that we study the word of God. Whenever you get a chance. I've always got my Bible with me. I'm always studying. If, you, if you've ever gone, if ever gone to the hospital with you, you'll, you'll watch. I'm studying. I'm talking to you but I'm studying. You know, uh, when I go home tonight, I'm going to sit down, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my Bible in my lap or have my computer in my lap. I'm going to be studying. Because I know that in order to get through this life, it is important to always be reading, studying, and meditating. There's a difference in reading, studying, and meditating. You know what the difference is? Here's reading. My word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to be empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which it was sent. That's ready. That's ready. Now you need them, put them in. If you put them in, you're depositing them. But it's kind of like if I'm going to put seeds in the ground, if I want to get a good harvest, I'm not just going to put them in the ground, I'm going to cultivate them. Mm -hmm. So now, if I'm starting to cultivate them, now I just want to tell you the same verse, Isaiah 55 and 11, I'm going to start looking around and seeing some, some other things about it. And something simple is getting another version. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. Why? Wait a minute. So not always return to be void. Sometimes that really doesn't really ring in my head. But this does. It's the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. Wow. But see, I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't studied it. Study means now I'm going to get out my pick, I'm going to get out my axe, and I'm going to start digging. And as I dig, I'm going to find out more stuff to do with this. It will accomplish what all, and it says that it will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper wherever I send it. Now, that's, that's study. Now I'm starting to get down in the pick and the shovels, and I'm starting to get into it. Now, meditate is music. Meditate now is uh, how many's ever had a, house, a project at your house that you needed done, and you thought about that thing, and you thought about it, and you thought about it, and you thought about it? How many's ever uh, you were sick, and you thought about it, and you thought about it? And the doctor told you what to do, and you still thought about it, and thought about it, and thought about it until it made you even sicker. Okay, that's music. That's meditating. Meditating means to mutter under your breath. So now, in a positive way, now that I've now that I've read it, it's not going to return unto him void. Now that I've studied it, and now I realize it means it's always going to produce fruit. That's what that means. 
Now when I meditate on it, and as I'm walking through, I'm thinking, you know what? I need to get that word in my head and get it in my heart and get it in my spirit because if his word always produces fruit. And I want to have fruit in my life. Why? Wow. As I'm walking through life, and I'm thinking, you know what? He said his word will always produce fruit. I need to know the word for this situation. I'm going to study it. I'm going to get over here. And I keep thinking, yeah, it's going to always produce fruit. Now I'm looking over here. See the difference? So if you just read it, that's good. But just reading it by itself can just be, well, i got to read a chapter. I told you I read a chapter a day. Watch you read? I don't know. So, okay, but now if you studied it, and the Lord says, okay, why don't you read? Now you can tell. But when you meditate, now you're talking with him about it. Why? You know, it's like marriage. I can read books on marriage. But until I say I do, you know, sometimes those books aren't so hot. <laughs> so I read it. So, so now that I'm married, that book means a whole lot more. But then when stuff starts happening and I can apply it, why? It's awesome. You know, Bethany, I sent her to school twice and, and finally one day I walked up to the, I walked up to the registrar. She said, what you doing? And I put some money up on the counter and I got my lighter out. <laughs> and she said, what you going to do? I said, I'm taking care of the money. She said, wait a minute. I said, well, she ain't studying, so I might as well put it here and catch it on fire. And they said, you can't burn money in here. I said, I've burned it so far. She ain't done anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> now she says, Daddy, I'm ready to go. And I said, well, this time you're going to pay for it. She said, I know, Daddy, you did the same thing with D.C. and Dan. You, took, you did it for them two times. On the third time, they were on their own. I said, I did it for you twice. Third time, you're on your own. So then, of course, you know I'm going to help her, but she don't know that. <laughs> now, Listen carefully. Reading, studying, and meditating. Watch this. All the stuff we just read before, all that stuff we talked about, his word and how he communicates to us, in order for all that stuff, it's like he's talking to you through experiences, talking to you through songs, talking to you, in order to know that it's him talking to you, the Bible tells us to try the spirits, to test them. And so in order to make sure that it's God speaking to you, you need to know the Word of God because God will never operate outside the confines of His Word. His Word is a strong boundary. And as long as what you're seeing and feeling between these two boundaries, you're fine. But if it's way over there somewhere, then hey, I had a guy, I had a guy one time come to me and say, God was telling him to leave his wife and go to this other woman. I said, get out of here. He said, yeah. He said, I know it's God, but I've got a burning in my chest. I said, dude, you, know, you need to get you some roll blades. That ain't God, that's gas. I said, look at the confines. The confines of the word. If it's in that confines, then when you're listening to God, you know it's true. Number three, listening to God means regularly getting alone and giving him my undivided attention. When I'm in the room with Anna Lane, she has a way of getting my undivided attention. Saturday, she climbed up on the table and then hung off the edge of the table, got right, put her put her feet in my leg, on my legs, in my lap, and she met me and took me like this and said, "Hey, Paul, Paul." It was pretty cool till now. Emmy was my undivided attention. Yes, Emmy, what you need, dear? Paw Paw. <laughs> what do you need, Emily? Paw Paw. <laughs> this morning, how many of us got, got the mighty army today? Is it, um, if, you, if you chase, well, well, how it goes, somebody got it, can read it to me. You can't get either one of them. Yeah, yeah, it's impossible to chase two rabbits, you'll catch nothing. <laughs> Okay? Same way you can't, catch, can't chase two chickens. <laughs> Never can't chase two mice. Okay. So now, the same way, there comes a time we just have to get alone. A lot of people like their quiet time early in the morning. That's pretty cool sometimes. My, most of the time, mine is early in the morning before the phone starts ringing off the hook. I'm ready. I can set back. God can talk to me. 
and I can really get some work done. So, so again, you got to give me under my attention. You say, well, who, why say that? Well, look what Jesus did. The Bible says, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When the evening came, he was there. All alone. Matthew 14, 23. Somebody tell me some ways that you might try to seek God alone. What do you do? What, 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 what's your, you might help somebody tonight by saying what you do. You can be in the, I can be in the car. That's good. Getting in the car. That's a good one. I got a gazebo. My dad's got a gazebo between my house and his house. I got the gazebo. If I'm working on a sermon and I'm stumped, I mean, I've got, I'm just stumped. And I'll, I'll get up and Linda says, what's wrong with me? I said, I'm stumped. She says, you're going to the gazebo, aren't you? I said, yep. Because <laughs> as soon as I get in that gazebo and sit down and it's quiet, I hear the crickets and the dogs and the chickens and a mule. I get real quiet and the Lord starts speaking to me. And I'll come back sometimes in 15 minutes, sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's two hours. When I come back in, she'll say, well, and I'll say, you're doing it again. Thank you, Zebo. Used to, I walk back in the woods. I walk back over a mile. One day I was in there, I was in there uh, in the woods, and I was just a, just a praying and just reaching out to God, and I was praying and reaching out to God. All of a sudden, I heard a gunshot, and then I heard a bullet go over my head. And I said, what in the world? And I couldn't see where the bullet was coming from, but somebody must have been setting their rifle because they kept shooting. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I've heard of praying under fire before. <laughs> and so I kind of timed the shots, and then I would run. <laughs> so I got out of there, I'm thinking, I didn't think I got shot while I was praying to God in the woods, and the man not even know it, I can't even come get me. What's some other ways to do it? Go in the woods. Uh, gazebo right now is the best thing. What else? Car? Riding. You can learn, you can talk to God so much. If you got if you got to ride from here to Washington, it's amazing how much you and God can get accomplished between here and Washington. I think the woods is the best bit. Woods, that's good. <laughs> you gotta especially especially stuff. outdoor guys, woods is awesome. Yep. We got it. Mm. <coughs> you ain't got a favorite stump out there to go sit on? No, I got a four wheeler to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anybody else? Sometimes, you know, when you say your prayers at night, you just go on and on and on until you fall asleep. That's awesome, too. Go on and on and on. That helps you sleep. Yeah. What you're doing is you're not counting, you're not counting sheep, you're talking to the shepherd. Mm -hmm. and, wow. But, I'm, you know, I quit moving my lips, but I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he sure does. He's listening. He's listening. That's right. That's scary too. <laughs> okay. Listen to God is opening your heart and letting God point his finger of truth on the real you. Do you know that the only person in this church that knows the real you is God? Amen. Wow. Remember, here's what we do. You hear me talk about it all the time. We judge ourselves by intention and we judge others by action. So no matter how bad we may do something, we say, well, we meant to do good because we're doing this, this. But then that person can do the same thing to you and you go, hey, you're way off base. Because now you're not, you're not judging their intention. You're judging their actions. God judges our intentions. When you stand before the white, or, or the, we'll stand before the white thumb, you stand before the white thumb, we got a problem. When you stand on the, on the, the beam of seat, Stand on, 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 on stand at the beam of seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. That's where Christians are going to be judged. He's not only going to judge your actions, he's going to judge your intentions. So some of the things you thought were sin down here with somebody else, maybe that hurt you, God's going to look at their intentions and say, you know what? He was really doing what I told him to do. It just came out wrong. I'm giving him credit. Amen. So, 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 so it's going to be different when you get up there, but he's going to judge our intentions. All right? And whenever we have communion, here's what I say. We're going to pray for God to turn his searchlight on within us and reveal to us anything within us that he does not like. That's what's going on here. And the Bible says, 
very clearly, search me, O God, know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way of me, excuse me, and lead me into the way of everlasting. Two more. We're going out here fast tonight. Or kind of fast. <laughs> it's too late to be fast. It's like the time Benny was not going to go to the hospital. Barbara called me and said, come over here, Benny's not doing good. I said, Benny, you can go to the hospital. So I ain't going. I took his blood pressure and his pulse and said, Benny, you need to go to the hospital. He said, I'm not going, I'm fine. I said, Benny, I've seen people at Paul Funeral Home look better than you. Exactly what he said. And Benny said, let's go. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> there, there's been times, there's been times, I'll tell you, where I felt like I'd have to get better before I could call Paul. <laughs> okay, here we go. Listening to God is carefully, oh, here it goes. This is the hard part. Here's the, the, here is the fingernails on the chalkboard. <laughs> listening to God is listening carefully to others. Realizing that God may be using them to communicate his personal message to me. Oh. Wow. And how many, the ladies go into a lance, and those ladies got up and did their talks. How many times those ladies did a talk, you just spoke right to you? And they're telling their personal stories. And it just speaks right to you. You know, uh, same way you come in on a Sunday morning or you go to Sunday school or you're riding down the road and you listen to somebody talk on the radio or a song or somebody walks up to you. This always gets me. I got something on my mind or I'm praying about something. Somebody walks up to me and it's like God just speaks right to me. And I'm going, they had no idea that's what I was praying about. They had no idea that's what I was asking God about. And they pop up, just tell me. It's because God sometimes, not all the time, sometimes, I have to admit, sometimes people who can just be can be like sandpaper, but remember, when God sends you sandpaper, it's to rub, it's to get off your rough edges. And here's something I also realize. I say, well, I've heard people say this. God's not talking to me. Well, let me just first tell you this. God can use anybody, anything. He's got to use a mule, a rooster. God can use anything, any method to talk to you. Here's the problem. Many times, God is talking, but we're not listening. Amen. He's on channel 3, and we're on channel 10. We have these little walkie-talkies we use when we're having the, the parade. And right to begin with, I set them on the right channel, both of them. Usually, I got one, and Linda's got the other, but we set them right there on and if something happens, if there's too much noise in China, we're not picking up, I'll tell her, move it up two. And she'll move it up two, and I'll move it up two. The problem happens when she calls me and says, move it up three, and I haven't heard her. <laughs> and so I'm still talking down here, and she's talking over here. That hasn't happened, but that does, I've, had it happen, had it happen, I've had it happen before at work. But I haven't had it happen to pray, but that's again, because I've had it happen at work, we make sure it doesn't happen when we're in the pray. But again, now we got something to call cell phones. We can call somebody. You know, I mean, this thing can really reach out and touch someone. But I mean, there was, there was one woman, I got, I, got, I got a cousin, she ain't done too smart. She got her cell phones. When she first got her cell phone, she was in the A&P. And her husband called her, and she's heard that thing ringing. And so she reached out and picked up the phone and she says, hello, and said, this your husband? And she, 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 and she said, and, and uh, she said, how'd you know I was in the A&B? <laughs> how'd you know? <laughs> you want to have some fun when you go to a restaurant that gives you a little number for your table and it says here, they give you a number like noodles and, and, and Greenville. Noodles is an awesome place to eat, low calorie, very inexpensive. And I go in there and I get, go to noodles, I go to get something. And they can't have my table, table number 26. I go, okay, which one's 26? And they go, sir, 
Wherever you're sitting is 20 seats. So I want to sit right here. And she says, no, there's somebody sitting there. <laughs> Just have some fun with people like that. <laughs> and my favorite is when I'm picking, I'm picking up a bottle of water and they go, and they take that six pack of bottle of water and they go, well you want your water in the bag? I said, no, I'd rather keep it in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you can loosen up. Again, that's like having prune juice in your uh, community. <laughs> Alright. The last one. Listening to God is recognizing the presence of the Holy Spirit within you and responding to His guidance for communicating with others. This is so awesome. Again, have you ever had somebody just come up to you? You're in the altar and, and, and maybe somebody's come by and they're just trying to make sure they pray with everybody and they just put their hand on you. still feel the power of God. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not discounting that. But then you have this person that's seen you pray and they come up and they've got a burden for you. They may not even talk to you personally. But they you just hear them praying. And you can hear them praying and they're saying, giving you answers to what you need. And you're going, they don't even know what I'm going through. How do they know to pray that? It's because of the Holy Spirit. It's not us, it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. But the counselor of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said unto you. John 14, 26. I like this verse, the Amplified Version. It's very informative. It says, But the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, the Advocate, Strengthener, the Standby. That's, that's some of the Greek words for it. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. He will cause you to recall will remind you and bring to your remembrance everything I've told you. The problem is, he's not going to bring it to your memory if it's not in there. So go back up to number two. Reading, studying, and meditating on his living word. When you read, study, and meditate, there's times I've read, read, read scriptures, and maybe for years... I'll take the scripture and break it down uh, into A, B, and C, different parts of that scripture. And for years, I always preached on C, and really just kind of went by A and B, and then all of a sudden I'm going to the trial, and now A sticking out, that first part of that. The one of the greatest things the Lord just showed me was when in James 5 16, it says, Confess your faults one to another. That you may be healed. It says, Since the perfect prayer of a righteous man availeth much, but it says, Confess your faults one to another, that you may be healed. And in counseling, it finally hit me really hard one day. Listen carefully. There's a lot of baggage we're carrying inside of us. Every last one of us, we got baggage. We got little compartments we've turned off that nobody else can go in with. You got to do it to the right person, not the wrong person. The wrong person will make it worse. But when God directs you and you feel comfortable with well, another person, if you can go to them and you can unlock that lock and you can confess what's eating at you, confess the shortcoming in your life, confess sin that you just, just left on out there somewhere. That is bugging you on the inside, which is bringing you down, making your blood pressure go up, making your sugar go up, making all kinds of things change inside of you because you're holding something inside as a time bomb. And if you can get to somebody that you trust, or even go pay a counselor, he's not going to tell anybody, you can pay him. Sometimes it's worth the hundred dollars to go sit down and talk to the counselor because he's a professional, he won't know you when you leave. You know, or whatever. You can just give it somebody and just confess. <coughs> confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. When you can get that out of your system, <coughs> get it out and get it out and open, then you can work on it. If it's a habit, if it's a problem, if you can get it out in the open, then you can work on it. As long as it's inside, there's no work. And it just keeps building and building and building and building until it just
because it changes your entire personality. If you know somebody that you believe is in that kind of predicament, don't go to them and say, hey, preacher said you need to tell me what's going on. <laughs> Guess what? You just shut that door. Mm -hmm. Amen. You should preach your opinion. Yes, you did. What you need to do is pray for them and ask God to send somebody their way that may be going through a similar problem. And if they can talk it over with each other, guess what? Healing begins. Amen. Wow. But you got to let God do it. I'm not the Holy Spirit. Jesus, I'm not Jesus. I'm definitely not a God. <coughs> but when they're allowed, when the Holy Spirit's allowed to move in that situation, what you can do, you may not can talk to them about it, but you can pray about it hard enough with, that we're not even hearing it. You can pray about it hard enough, and it's amazing how God will put the right person in their life for them to talk back and forth. It's amazing. But again, once you get that, once you get that rising, that soreness out of you, or begin to let it out, then you can be healed. Now you know what? Confess your false ones and know that you may be healed. I never saw it that way. Like that. Until I started getting deeper and deeper and deeper into counseling. And then I began to see it. As people come in, and we finally just let it go. And it was like an immediate relief. They were just, I mean, just immediate relief. Sometimes they had to work on it. So they had to work on it hard, but just getting it out. You could watch them. While they're trying to get it out, they're, they're fidgeting, and they're going back and forth, and they take you 25 things. You know that 25 things they want to talk about. When they finally get that one thing, you see them go, And then the healing begins. So now, either if it's you or somebody you know, just pray for them. Pray for yourself. Ask God to put you through the right person. Because God wants you to be healed. And it's not just talking about physical healing. There's a lot of emotional healing that needs to go on throughout this United States. A lot of emotional and spiritual healing. Answer this question. Yes, sir. If I answer this question right. Okay. Somebody the other day was telling me, so well, I ain't got to go to church. I can listen to it on the radio and you get just as much out of it. Well, something came over me and I told him, I said, well, the church is God's bride. Or in that neighborhood, and I said, you got to go to church to really get close to God. Yeah. You know what I tell people? Going to church, they say, well, going to church will make me a Christian. I said, no, I'm going. I said, going to church makes you a Christian. Christian about as much as going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. <laughs> You can park, you can, you can, you can lay in your garage, you're in a car. Church is there to build you up. That's where you get the edification. You cannot get the same thing. David Jeremiah is awesome. He is so awesome. Charles Stanley is tremendous. John Hake, wow. You know, I like T.D. Jakes too. Those guys can just flat out put it out there. They're not, they're not hyper. Uh, hyper faith or not hyper uh, prosperity they enrich me but they're there to enrich me the church is there to lift us up look you know what happens to church number one we're, we get to be able to get people of like faith mm -hmm. number one fellowship oh, yeah. that you can't get that fellowship David Jeremiah's folks yeah. Number two, you get, uh, you learn. You get to share back and forth. You learn, you get to see, and you get, you, you, and you get built up because you see somebody you know, and you know what they're going through, or maybe not know what they're going through, but eventually you know, and you realize how God worked for them, and they work for you. So you get lifted up, you get, you get emboldened. Also, let me tell you quick, let me tell you this. If you go to, to Craven County Hospital at 1230 in the night, and it's an emergency, and, you, and you're not even sure if you're going to make it. Call David Jeremiah. <laughs> Call Charles Stanley. Right. Call T.D. Jackson. and say, I really need you here. Linda said that to someone the other day. I said, I'm talking about, oh, how, you know, they can get as much on TV. And okay. I said, well, you know what? I said, when you're in the hospital, or you've got someone in the hospital and they die, I said, 
called in. I <laughs> said, that minister on TV may be great, but he's not going to be at the funeral home. He's not going to be at the hospital with you. <laughs> I, had a minister, I had a minister say, I asked about my church. We were needing a new piano. And uh, this preacher was preaching in faith. And so, so uh, this one lady was writing to the preacher, and, and the preacher said, and she said, said uh, you keep talking about sowing seeds. I said, how is that to sow seeds in our church to help us buy a new piano? And he wrote back to her and said, we don't do that. But if you want God to bless you, you send me a thousand dollars. That's right, nurse. I kid you not. You send me a thousand dollars if you if you want God to bless you. I saw a preacher on TV and and again playing on people's emotions and playing on things. I saw him. I saw him say, "Put your hand. Walk up to the TV and put your hand on the screen and just feel the powers." I pray for you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? One well, the first thing they do when we're in, when we're, when we're in television school. Well, one of the first thing you do is how you get when these people don't know what's going on, you give them a little cloth, you give them a white, the screen, and you get them to touch something metal. It'll light them up and go, what you do that for? You just got initiated, buddy. It's called static electricity. Okay, so so he's getting people to think they touch the television, now they're feeling, oh, that power. Yeah, you're getting static electricity. But he's got, he got your thousand dollars. You can't at twelve thirty at night call David Jeremiah or all those guys. Plus, if you had a, if your loved one died, try calling them and do the funeral. Mm -hmm. I knew one of these bigger guys. I knew them personally. I'm not going to mention their name. I knew them before they were like they are now. They have a worldwide ministry, and I was talking to somebody else. That, and, and he happened to mention this person. And we were trying to go into the hospital to go visit somebody. And he said, this person said that he hired somebody to do that. He, he was too big for that now. To go to the hospital. So now, you get sick, call David Jeremiah and say, can you get your people to make some food to feed everybody? So again, that stuff doesn't happen on television. Mm -hmm. You don't get built up like that off of television because here you've got friends and family. It's a family. It's a body. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're a member of the body. Here, one person's got a talent, another person's got a talent. Y'all compliment each other. Some of these get done. Plus, the camaraderie you get built, you know, uh, because you're, you're, building, you're building together a vision for God. You know, it makes me, it, it aggravates me when I watch these guys on television and say, I pray for God to give me a Learjet, I got one. <laughs> I heard a preacher say that. <laughs> and, he said, and it costs several thousand dollars just to crack the thing. And there's a minister right now, he wants us to send me money. I saw it. Send me money because I need money. I'm pastoring a church on both coasts. And so I need money so I can put fuel in my jet to fly from here to there to pastor. He's not pastoring anybody. Mm. He's preaching. Mm. Good. Well, how does God, how does God handle that? Well, he will. It's coming. Because, he will. I mean, <laughs> because it appears that these so-called ministers. I'm not saying they're not ministering. They're ministering the word. Okay, but the ones that. You watch. You watch David Jeremiah. He doesn't say, "I'm your television pastor." He doesn't say, "Send me your tithe." You know, he says, I'm here to enhance. I'm here to help. You know, I, I know people that, that uh, even like Joel Osteen. Mm -hmm. Joel Osteen, a man offered him, I heard him say it out of his own mouth, a man offered him about 200 theaters so that he could have satellite churches all over the United States. You know what he said? Nope. Mm -hmm. He said, because that will take away from the churches in the area. He said, if they want to come to this church, let me be their pastor to come to this church. We're not going out in all those 200 cities. Because I can't know, it's impossible. All you can do is hurt mothers, hurt other little churches. And so, again, going, God intended for us to go worship in a body. 
Let me ask you a question. If you're married, do you think that a marriage would survive if you only saw them on television once a week? As some do, especially since you see the end time coming. And that word assembly is the word where we get the Hebrew is synagogue. And so synagogue is where you worship. So, so don't forget to get together and worship together. There's a lot of faith when y'all get together. Yes, sir. Well, I remember a couple of fellows, one with the name Baker and the other with the name Swagger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got their just reward. Yeah. yeah. Well, Baker wrote a book and said, I'm wrong. I was wrong. Mm -hmm. Baker wrote a book and I was wrong. He's on television now. Well, both of them are on television now. Both of them said they were wrong. Yeah. But there was a lot of damage. Oh, there was a lot of damage. That hurt me. When, when, when that happened with Jimmy, that hurt me really bad. Because mm -hmm. I said, y'all were just, uh, my, my uncle was making fun of the whole situation. I said, I don't know who you're talking about. You know, they're not talking about Jimmy's wagon. Mm -hmm. And then when I, I watched it for myself, and I... I it just tore me out of pieces. I'm, I'm a kid that tore me up because I was thinking, if anybody, you know. But again, I don't know how he lives if he's over, he's over here somewhere, or or like uh, uh, these guys drive around in Bentleys, ranch houses, and saying, "Send me your," and it's the big thing now. Send me your thousand dollar receipt. It's all a thousand, one thousand. Hmm. I'm sorry. But there's people right here that need help. Mm -hmm. There's people right here that, that need us to reach out to the community. There's people right here, even the church itself, needs us to give into the church because the church has to operate. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to. And, and so uh, I'm telling you, I, I watched the minister. It really upset me. I watched the minister, and he kept talking about, y'all need to help me build my vision, and I need mm -hmm. HD cameras so this telecast can go out really nice. So I need, I need 10 people to give $10,000 a piece. I'm sorry. I just, 